Dapper, Dividends, Dapper, Dividends, yeah! A <laughs> little bit of the 80s there. I love it, man. So what's up? Hey, how's it going? I'm Russ. This is Dapper Dividends. Thank you for making me a part of your investing journey. We're all a little crazy. We all float down here. What's up? I love it and horror movies. So it is October. But more important things, what's going on with IBM? We're going to look into that. So this is a little bit of a double duty here because I had a viewer want to know what's up with IBM and the spinoff and my thoughts and opinions on it. And you might be a little bit surprised by what I am going to do with my IBM that I do own a little bit of. I think 10 shares you can always Check out the Bridge Portfolio at degrin.com. If you're on YouTube, click in the link below. Click in the description below if you're on the podcast. Click in the whatever it is below. You can find it. Just scroll to the bottom. You'll find it. Okay, so what's going on in the world? First off, got to say I shared on Twitter that Bitcoin is at all-time highs, broached 60 Seven, 67,000. I don't know what I'm doing. 60. Oh, by the way, we don't cut here on the podcast. Errors. We're live without a net. We just go full steam ahead. We're haze gray and underway. So yeah, Bitcoin. I first bought Bitcoin on December 7th, 2017 in honor of the new all-time highs for Bitcoin. I shared that and I really wish I would have bought more. I became aware of it in... Uh, in about summer of 2016. And fantastically, I didn't buy it then because as I told my wife, I love the idea, but if the power goes out, it's useless. So I came to my senses and finally got in when it was rocketing toward all-time highs at around 16,000 in December of 2017. So I bought some more Bitcoin in honor of that this week. And then I also bought more Algorand, which is symbol A-L-G-O. And what I really like about them is that they are moving toward trying to get governments to use their blockchain technology to build their central bank digital currencies on, or CBDCs. And the Republic of the Marshall Islands is the first one that said they would like to use their blockchain technology, use their plat their underlying platform to host their central bank digital currency. So I love it. I love that Algorand is really trying to get governments to build CBDCs on it. Think of it what you will, but I do own a bunch of Algorand, bought more Algorand. Not only am I staking it on the Algorand wallet, but today I became a governor as well. So if you hold the Algorand, look into that. You can Google how to be a governor. You vote on the direction of where Algorand is going and you will get more rewards. So enough of that. Love where crypto is going. I disagree with the likes of Dave Ramsey. I think that you should have, I think it, put it this way, it's too, ex, too risky to not have any exposure to cryptocurrency. I think it's such a revolutionary technology, you have to have some exposure to it. So let's get on to IBM. They did have a pretty poor quarter three 2021 earnings. And one of the things that jumped out was their top line was up 0.03%. So it was minimally up uh, versus quarter three of... um, I'm sorry, first quarter three of 20. So it's just barely up. The gap earnings per share was down 34% year over year. Uh, One thing I did like about IBM is that they are trying to pivot into being more of a cloud-based company. And they are trying to do that, of course, with their cloud and cognitive software, which was up 2.5% brought in $5.7 billion. Um, Their 10% gain was in the cloud and the uh, platform growth. The big winner, which I had liked their acquisition of Red Hat, that had 17% revenue growth. They didn't release any 2022 guidance. So that was probably the best of it. Uh, There's all kinds of, of information out there. And a lot of things I had been hearing from a lot of my FinTwit 
brothers and sisters out there was that they're cooking the books in financial engineering. And, you know, I kept trying to look past it, but I think it's it's reached a point because it seems a little ridiculous today when they talked about, uh, they had a quote, I think it was their CFO, about solid cash generation. And that solid cash generation, I don't see it because as I look through here, and you can see, I'll share the, the shot right here, that I see from their free cash that they paid out $1.5 billion in dividends, but they took on $1.2 billion in new debt. That just stinks to me. Now, that's non-global financing. They have a global financing arm. And as you can see, it's non-global financing related new debt, which really worries me because this stinks that uh, it stinks of that they are just bringing on new debt to pay out the dividends because I know there's a lot of people that probably wouldn't be invested in Big Blue if it wasn't for that dividend yield, which is kicking around, well, before today's drop, 5%. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it's going up. So it was lower to 4%. It's going to be going up tomorrow because people are bailing. I think last I saw it was down about $5, $6 in uh, after hours, and rightfully so. Now, the one thing that people want to know about is the spinoff. What they are doing is they are spinning off a segment that they're calling Kindrel. And as IBM shareholders, we will receive one share of Kindrel for every five IBM shares uh, for those that hold on October 25th. So depending on when you're watching this video or podcast, that is coming up quick here. So if you want to get shares of Kindrel, make sure you have your shares of IBM. And Kindrel is their managed infrastructure services division. And from things I've seen, it has been unprofitable. Its biggest competitor is Accenture, ticker ACN, which is profitable. This worries me and it feels like IBM is spinning off a dying and unprofitable division, whether it's headwinds or poor management or a combination of both. Feels like they're trying to just spin that off into its own entity, which of course we're going to get shares of. Now, what I worry about is that the dividend is going to be cut here, and I'm worried that they're going to be using this opportunity to cut the dividend when they spin off Kindrel. It would be the perfect cover because they can claim they're losing revenue. They're right-sizing it, kind of like AT&T did. Now, I'm more bullish on AT&T because we're getting shares of Time Warner, which by my estimation is the second largest streaming platform behind Netflix. Disney, I'm not too worried about because they have a ton of uh, people that got locked in because of the deal with Verizon and whatnot. We get it on our phone. You know, so I don't think they're putting the money into new content like Time Warner and Netflix are. But anyway, side, <laughs> sidebar. And what, what we're trying to say here is that I'm worried about the dividend. And if I'm being completely honest, if it wasn't for that dividend, I don't really think I would be holding IBM. And always remember that we're buying businesses. We're not just buying a dividend, we're buying a business. And it's very important that you understand that, that I understand that, because I can lose sight of that sometimes, like I think I've done with IBM, that I've become blinded by that dividend yield. And it's just, it's time for me to part with IBM because... One of the things that's always bothered me, and I can't reconcile it anymore, is they have an adjusted free cash flow line. Now, I've always been steadfast in what I say is that the bottom line, the free cash flow, you can't mess with free cash flow because the SEC will frown on that. People will go to jail. Now, you can manipulate uh, earnings per share and you can manipulate income, all different kinds of things can be uh, financially managed within, legally done, but you can't manipulate the free cash flow, but somehow IBM has a free, adjusted free cash flow line. I, I don't know how they get away with it. And I put it out on Twitter. And if you know, let me know. I'd love to be aware if there's any other companies that have adjusted free cash flow, because I'm not aware of it. So 
it does look to me like they're cooking the books. And I do have something I want to read to all you all here. So this was from a Barron's article, and it said, After the spinoff concludes, IBM claims the initial combined dividend of the two companies will, quote, no less than, or it will be, quote, no less than IBM's pre-spin dividend per share. However, the, quote, payment of any dividends in the future and the timing and amount thereof is within the discretion of the board. And boy, does that make me worried. So... I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to receive these shares of Kindrel because it's uh, this is being filmed on uh, October the 20th. So five more days and I'll be locked in and I'm going to be out. I'm going to close my position with IBM. It's just too many financial shen shenanigans and <laughs> cooking the books, what it looks like that I think I'm... I'm done. I'm going to move move on. And again, you can see that follow along at degrin.com with the uh, link in the description below. So where am I putting my money? Let's take this moment to pause and reflect as I take a sip of water on the majesty and the wonder of the time and the place that we truly do live in. And we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, which makes life pretty exciting. See, live without a net, man, baby, whoever's watching. So I'm putting my money with the company that's been in my ears for quite some time is Apple. I'm going to just roll it into Apple because uh, they are just wonderful. They're a big company. I wish I would have held on to them. Back in my swing trading days, I had picked up five shares of Apple when it was gosh, I don't know, it was right around 180, 190 bucks a share. And then I, I think I took like a $5 gain per share and I was out of it. Stupid, stupid. But you know what? I was trying something new. I was trying to be cute with the money and just, I was going to be a swing trading millionaire, I guess. So I should have held on to those shares, which I also did with Tesla. Man, do I wish I had that back. I swung Tesla from 200 and... I believe 10 to $220. It was only three shares and I took my $30 profit. That was pre-split. <laughs> that was when people were saying they were going to go bankrupt and I listened to some of the experts and my wife though said, you want a Tesla? And people are buying them. We're seeing more of them. I would just hold it, but you know, I knew better and now that is just looking really bad, really bad. But you know what? We live and we learn. We can't go back in the past. All we can do is use our past experience to affect what comes next. And the only thing we can control that comes next is our mind, our money, and our body. So what I am controlling is I'm putting my money into Apple. I feel it's a little bit overvalued, but it's it's so big with where they're going. And this is what really did it for me. So check out this chart right here. For those of you that are watching on YouTube, this is really cool. Now, our friends over at Kings of Capitalism, which is at Capitalism Kings. You can see them on Twitter. Now, their iPhone sales we're at 63.4% of total revenue in 2016, and that has dropped to 50.2% in 2020. But not to worry, not to worry, because services is on the rise. Services was 11.3% of revenue in 2016, and it is now 19.6% of revenue in 2020. The wearables, home, and accessories were about 1%. And they are currently now at 11.2% in 2020. So they're growing in other, other areas. And one of those areas is healthcare. Now, there was an AirPods rumor that that's going to eventually be able to track posture. It can double as a hearing aid. I tweeted out today that what a great way to, to have customers is, <laughs> is that... Uh, I, I suspect, even though I don't listen to music, that I'm losing hearing with the AirPods, and eventually they're going to give me the hearing aid AirPods and have a customer for life. So, But they really do have a device that already is for, um, for helping hearing uh, impaired people. 
So that they are going to be doing that. They're moving into healthcare. They have the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch already can track your heart rate, your blood oxygen levels, your sleep quality. It can even perform electrocardiograms. And check out this headline here if you're watching on YouTube. I'll have a link in the description below. As of November 1st, as part of United Healthcare's uh, benefit plan, uh, 3 million fully insured people that own an Apple Watch will have access, will have a subscription to Apple Fitness Plus for one year. And that's going to be at no additional cost. Now, what they will do with that is they're going to help you have guided meditations and workouts if you have an Apple TV on your iPhone. You'll be able to access all these things to track your health, track your wellness. They want people to be fit. They want people to be healthier, which is pretty cool because you think of the the sedentary lifestyle that many of us have. We're just always looking on our devices. We're sitting down a lot. So I think this could be a really big thing as Apple wants to move more into the services and the accessories uh, sector. And it's a burgeoning, it's a growing industry. I mean, look at, uh, what's the one with the screen? Oh my God, I'm blanking, I'm blanking. I can't think of it. <laughs> the one, uh, like Peloton, they have that. And that one where you look in the mirror and there's somebody in there working out, showing you what to do. Uh, I know some of you are screaming what it is, but don't worry. I'll wake up tonight at 2.52 in the morning and I will remember what that company's called. <laughs> Now, Tim Cook, looking forward, he had a quote that said he thinks health will be Apple's greatest contribution to mankind. This is just what's always big. I know a lot of people are discounting Apple. A lot of people think it's not going to work, that they're trying to sidestep into healthcare and they're trying to move into the health and wellness. They want to help bridge the the gap between patient and doctor, which I, you know, I'm all for I'm all for that. And what makes Apple so strong is that people buy why they do what they do instead of what they do, which is a really powerful thing. You have to have a why. Just like my why on this channel is to help us grow our passive income because every dollar that's coming in passively is one less dollar that we have to work for. And like you know, one of the most powerful quotes that I've ever come across that you you know really shifted it was Warren Buffett's quote that if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, baby, you're going to work until you die. Emphasis in my interpretation on the baby. Maybe Warren would say it. But anybody knows? Let's uh, get in contact with him. But anyway, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be putting money into Apple. I'm going to be selling out of IBM after the uh, after the 25th of November, because I would like to get that. And I just, I just today got that gut feeling that they're going to use the, uh, they're going to use spinning off uh, Kindrel. They're going to use that as cover to cut the dividend. Now that does sound like Kindrel will pay a dividend, but IBM's, as we just heard, is going to be up to the board. And that really makes me nervous that they're going to just and also their uh their net income doesn't cover the dividend. I looked it up right before I went on the trailing 12 months the net income is 8.5% below the dividend that's paid out. So there is just a lot of financial manipulation going on with IBM and you know it's just got me worried. So it's something I would strongly consider. I would love to know what you are doing with IBM or Apple for that matter. Let me know what you think of those two companies. What about Bitcoin? Are you in Algorand? Are you in any of these? We want to know what you're thinking. There is anyway. Anyway, so that's what I'm talking about. Another company that has really gone up, that's really cool to see. The market was a, obviously a big green today again, but Verizon was up another 2%. And remember what I say, this is why I'm so strong on Verizon, is bullish on Verizon, is because 
Verizon and AT&T are big companies that are not going anywhere. We're not buying them for growth. We're buying them for the, yes, the dividend because they're just cash cows. They I have such big moats that they're growing and I love that they are focusing on telecommunications and what made them what they are. So good on them. And if you would like to know more about Verizon, click the video right here. I will talk to you there and have a good night.